What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Dodgers Explicit Episode 9. I'm Ram. And I'm Josh. Before we get started, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe to our channel as we keep you up with the latest Dodger content. So our question of the day to you guys, which can be answered down in the comments, is what do you think about this Teoscar Hernandez signing? Is it good for the Dodgers or is it something that's not finishing the team yet? Let us know in the comments. All righty, yeah. So to start off today, obviously the Dodgers signed free agent Teoscar Hernandez to a one-year $23.5 million contract. With $8.5 million deferred, that'll be paid out between 2030 and 2039. Ram, I don't know about you, but this deferral money stacking up, and I don't know, man. I know we're in win-now mode, obviously, but shoot, it's it's stacking up, and it's stacking up pretty fast. Yeah, I think I think this is a contract we should not have deferred. It's a one-year deal. We we deferred Otani's contract and only paying Yamamoto $5 million this year. So that way we can pay guys like this for this year. I feel like it's just unnecessary. This one, I don't know. I don't really like it. We still got Teoscar Hernandez, which is good, but I don't like how it's it's lasting, what, 10 years, was it? Or how many years uh, was it lasting? Th through 2030, 2030 through 2039, so nine years. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't sound right to me. On a one-year deal, it makes sense with the big contracts, but I feel like this is something we should have just paid this year. I mean... I don't know what that's telling me about the Dodgers' financial situation, but I guess if they're going to keep deferring money, then we better just go all in now. Like, there's no other option. We, I imagine that means we're not done. I, I really don't think we're done. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I also want to note that um, the morning of – so Teoscar Hernandez signed January 7th in the evening time. Um, Andrew Friedman was on MLB Network Radio – January 7th in the morning. And he said that the main focus was signing a right-handed outfielder who can crush lefties and hold his own against righties. And I mean, Andrew Friedman did exactly what he said. And that was our priority, successful priority. And Teoscar Hernandez is now a Dodger. And I'm saying, I've always said it. Andrew Friedman is, he's our guy. Like, <laughs> like we've always trusted Andrew Friedman, no matter what move he makes, it's always for good reason. And I really like this signing. Um, I also feel like he Teoscar Hernandez also has like some sort of swag that like nobody on our team really had. Like obviously, you know, we got stars and stuff, but there's I don't know, there's just a difference. Like there's no attitude. There's no attitude, yeah. And Teoscar Hernandez has that has that attitude. Like when he hits a bomb, he's just gonna look at it. And people say that's bad for baseball. No, it's not. That's good for baseball. Yeah, and you got people at the Dodgers just don't have people that do that. Mm -mm. We just don't. But Teoscar Hernandez is going to bring that. If he hits a clutch home run, he's going to look at it. He's going to yell. And, like, I feel like that's just what we needed. And it was it was perfect. I really love the signing. Real quick, I just want to say, I have never seen Mookie Betts or Freddie Freeman backflip. Have we? Closest I can think of is 2020 World Series Game 6, Mookie's eighth inning home run, and, and he, he hit it. And he just looked at the bat and tossed it. And then obviously his, you know. Yeah. The that iconic was one. That was legendary though. Yeah. No, so we need, we need some more, we need some more attitude on our team for sure. We're too nice. We got it. We got to mm -hmm. embrace that villain role. Like Brandon was Dude. saying. No, yeah. We definitely need to em embrace this villain role because all of MLB is against us. You go in MLB's comments and everybody's just crying and complaining. But at the same time, why not just embrace it? Be the team everybody hates. Be the team everybody wants to see lose in October. We were already that. Now we're double, maybe triple that now. Everybody's going to be preying on our downfall. That's okay. We've got to prove everybody wrong. And everybody's going to say, all this just to lose in the first round of the Diamondbacks again. Okay, cool. Say that. We lost last year. Yes, we understand. We obviously watched it. But that's what made us do this this year. So oh, yeah. thanks a lot. They should not have let the D-back sweep us. Because now we're out here spending one point two billion dollars this offseason. So they should not have let that happen. Poor poor everyone else, but and poor us. We had to go through a sweep from the damn D backs. But <laughs> hey, they just shouldn't have let it happen because look what we did. Yep. And I also want to note too, um, it was first reported that Teosca Hernandez was gonna get a multi year contract and that um that it was gonna be like a three year deal. And then Randomly, it said that the Dodgers were willing to go beyond the three-year deal. And I was like, 
damn, like Teoscar Hernandez isn't like super young. So, you know, I feel like that'll be a stretch. Um, so at first I was kind of concerned with the signing. And then I was actually on Do Not Disturb. I was watching um I was watching Bill's Dolphins. And then I opened Twitter and I just saw Dodgers Teoscar Hernandez one year 23.5. And I instantly opened FaceTime and I saw you and Brandon were already in the Dodgers chat. I was like, shoot, son, I joined it. But I, I originally thought like, wow, this could be like potentially a bad contract if we sign him for four years. But signing him for one year, we know the Dodgers love those short term high AAV deals. And we got just that. I mean, 23.5 million is a lot, but I mean, he can hit some bombs. I saw a stat that um, if he played in Dodger Stadium every night, his um, expected home runs would have been 31 over the 26 he actually hit last year. So I expect to see 25 plus bombs this year. And yeah, he strikes out a lot, but I mean, he's a big RBI guy, extra base hit guy. That's what yeah, we needed. He can, he can definitely be the guy to bring in our top our top stars. Mm -hmm, for sure. Him and Muncie are going to play a big role for us, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, I also want to talk about how this kind of pushes back CT3's role a little bit. Um, we had mentioned that this was CT3's, like, prove it year. But I don't really think he's going to get the chance for that. I think he's just going to really be, like, super utility. Because um, Jim Bowden reported that um, Teoscar Hernandez was going to be our primary left fielder i believe and then manuel margot and jason hayward would split time in right field and like platoon which makes sense and then that just makes taylor just super utility everywhere mm -hmm. and the splits with taylor is he's better against righties so it's kind of it's kind of tough i do like that he's a utility player because he can come after james Altman's spot and he can come after gavin lux's spot so nobody's nobody's safe with chris taylor on our roster we, and we know when taylor's hot nobody's stopping him it's mm -hmm. just his cold stretches are are pretty cold so I, I trust I trust our team to to make the the right lineup every day. When when Taylor's hot, he better be in that lineup because he's unstoppable. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so Blake Harris tweeted out: the Dodgers appear to have their offense set as they have thirteen guys locked in for opening day. Shohei Otani, Will Smith, Austin Barnes, Freddie Freeman, Gavin Lux, Max Muncy, Miguel Rojas, Chris Taylor. Mookie Betts, Jason Hayward, Manuel Margot, James Altman, and Teoscar Hernandez. And he also noted below that unless we change something up and maybe trade Margot or something, it looks like both Michael Bush and Miguel Vargas are going to be starting the season in AAA. One of them might be gone before the season ends. Or I think the, one of them. Before the season starts, I mean. Yeah, before the season starts, I think I think one of them will be gone for sure. Um, that MLB insider dude, I heard he's been kind of like posting stuff and deleting it. But um, he said that the Dodgers are in works of a trade right now. Um, I can pull it up real quick. I don't know. He's not very um, like trustworthy. Trustworthy. Yeah. But he is he has called some things. So he has a track record. But I also heard that he'd be deleting stuff pretty often. But he basically said, I'm, I can't find it. I have. Oh, here it is. The says the Dodgers are looking to add both starting and relief pitching, possibly in the same trade. Would also free up some space on their 40 man roster by trading away multiple prospects slash players. The proposed trade is now in advanced stages. That was two hours ago. I don't know. I don't, to be honest, I don't think we're going to do anything else crazy. We'll probably just get rid of somebody. DFA somebody, trade him for for a nobody. I don't think we're I don't think we'll make any more big moves unless it's for like a reliever, but even still, I don't I can see it's just signing Kershaw, re-signing Brazier, which also we're in the talks. Uh apparently we're still interested in him. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. So yeah, uh, we finally got some news on him today. Dodgers are still interested in him. So I really hope we bring him back because he last year was lights out. Like all all he yeah. did was come in, look at me like this. And he would literally just go in and throw a bunch of sliders, and they couldn't hit it. So, I if if we don't resign him, I think that's an L. I say just resign Brazier, resign Kershaw, call it a day until the trade deadline, and and see what moves we need to make. See if Vargas belongs on our team, Bush belongs on our team. Those guys might be out, or who knows? We got to see our health too. We never know where what can happen. We never know. 
Okay, I'm gonna. I actually disagree with you on that. I think we still need to make a trade. Um, we need to trade Michael Bush, bro. I've been saying it for years. He is MLB ready, but we don't have an MLB spot for him. So we need to get, we need to get the value out of him and go get somebody that is MLB ready. If it is Devin Williams or Emmanuel Class A, whatever it is, we need we need to go get somebody MLB ready for Michael Bush and another prospect that's on the forty man, whatever. Yeah, but think of it like this: we're gonna need a third baseman soon. We have we don't really have anybody crazy in the third base spot. Once Muncy's out, which I mean, he's at the tail end of his career. He's at the tail end of his career, to be honest. Like he's he doesn't have that much time left, and we I don't like him defensively at third either way. So. If if we want to utilize him as a third baseman or trade him for a third baseman, then I would do that. But right now, I don't think I don't think right now we should trade him. Michael Bush has like equally defensive metrics as Max Muncy, though. Yeah, but at so, least it's a at least it's a restart in in age because Max Muncy's getting up there. Yeah, no, I I I uh, I understand that, but I just like he's gonna be in AAA again. What is he gonna do? Win AAA Player of the Year? Like, bro. I think he'll be a bench bat. I don't know, because what's our bench bats right now? We're looking at probably like Hayward, Margot, oh. Barnes, and... Hayward, Margot, Barnes, and... Taylor. Rojas. Oh, yeah, Rojas. Well, I'll tell you right now. I don't know why Rojas is on our team. I don't know why either anymore, because we have Lux is healthy now, and then Taylor can play short. So Mookie yeah, could play short. I, Mookie could play short, like last resort. But I don't know. I just feel like having him in AAA is just useless, and we should get the value out of him while we can and trade him for a closer. Yeah, but trading for closers are always so risky. I don't. I don't know if I want to trade that good of a prospect for a closer. Yeah, but when. When the tail end of the games are locked down and we have Phillips also in the eighth and then Bruiser in the seventh and then training, like, bro, think about that. Think about how how locked down that makes the bullpen. Like, that literally just solidifies it. We don't need we a are. closer. We don't need a closer, but it would be nice to have a lockdown closer like Gratterall, we did back Gratterall, in the day. Put in Gratterall, put in Phillips, or put in training, bro. Those are all three closer material, all three of them. No, no I agree. They're, they could all three be closers. But you know, like, you know, having a solidif solidified closer every single save opportunity that they're available would be nice. Think about how good the Dodgers were back with Eric Gagne. Like, he came in the game, it was over. Kenley Jensen came in the game back in the day, it was over. Do the same for Gratterall, and I promise it'll be over. Gratterall was nasty last year. Look he was. at his numbers. Gratterall should have been a closer. Yeah, we, okay, we either need to go acquire a closer or we need to make somebody a closer full time. Like let them know, hey, Evan Phillips, you're the closer. Bruce Dart, you're the closer. Like either one. Just somebody needs to be the closer. There, there doesn't need to be this switching in and out. And if we do sign a closer, just sign. Or if we do get a closer, just sign Hater. Because I mean, he's a lefty. I don't. Our bullpen is perfectly fine. I think it should be the least of our worries. And if anything, we just add a lefty. And it doesn't even have to be Hater. It could be anyone else. Just trade for somebody. But not don't trade Bush yet. I promise. I just hate that he's just sitting in Triple A, just I know I, destroying I hate shit. It. I hate it too. But wh what do we need right now that would be good value? I mean, we'd be a, potentially lowballing ourselves because why would we trade that good of a prospect for a closer? Who's but gonna you last said he, like you said? We want to go all in. We have the bullpen. What what cool. what other spot do we need to fill right now? The, uh, right now, I'm ready to start opening day, exactly. but there, you can so always improve. Trade? What What is there to improve right now? Anything you can improve, anything always. You can Just go improve the five starter. starter. You can go improve the five starter. You could go get a lefty. Yeah, but Michael Bush for a five starter. All in. <laughs> this team is all in already. More. I want more. I don't understand what else we could do. I really don't. I don't Michael, know. I don't know either, but we're gonna make some moves. I already know that. Michael Bush is not worth the same as a as a closer or a reliever or a five starter. If if we trade Michael Bush, it's gonna be for another blockbuster trade. Well, just baseball had Michael Bush 
and the pitcher for Devin Williams, which I thought was crazy. We don't need Devin Williams. I really don't think we do. I don't know. We'll see. Um. So what? What moves for the forty man? Or we already talked about that. I'm sorry. And then CG3's role, we already got that. Um. But yeah, overall, I think we're both um pretty satisfied with the Teoscar Hernandez signing, and the contract is very um Dodger friendly. So. Yes. I'm, yeah. Right now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm really loving it. He got that swag to him. Gonna hit some bombs. And, and yeah, the, it makes the depth of our lineup so much deeper. They talk about our lineups just top heavy, same as the Braves. That pushes one more spot back of, of how top heavy is our lineup, because it pushes another spot back to Oscar Hernandez. He might be a four hitter. He might be a six hitter. Either way, one through six were pretty elite. Yeah, so the lineup right now, um, this is from Talking Baseball. Shout out to them. Great show. Um, I'm going to switch our two, three. Okay, let's let's agree on this. Shohei or Freddie, two? Right now, Freddie. Okay, I agree. All right. So at second base, so this would be our opening day lineup for 2024. At second base, leading off, you have Mookie Betts. Batting second, playing first base, you have Freddie Freeman. Batting third, DHing, you have Shohei Otani. Batting fourth, catching, you have Will Smith. Batting fifth, at third, you have Max Muncy. Batting sixth, you have newly acquired Teoscar Hernandez. Batting seventh, you have James Altman in center field. Batting eighth, you would have the platoon between Manuel Margot or Jason Hay- or Jason Hayward. And then batting ninth, you have shortstop Gavin Lux. Honestly, I'm putting Taylor eighth still. I think... Taylor's still better than Hayward and Margot. I know. I I, I agree. I want I want them to give Taylor that full time role. I do. Uh, I do too. He did. I maybe I I was gonna say he deserves it, but I think the opportunity is it should be his. He he should yeah. be the guy to beat, not not Jason Hayward. Yeah. Well, I think I think we're just gonna platoon Hayward and and Margot, but maybe start Taylor day one but then like if somebody needs a rest for day two let's say they're extra sore after one game god forbid they better not be sore after one damn game <laughs> but then it's like okay taylor you go play here and then outman margo or and then hayward margo like you know you guys whatever depending on who's pitching but yeah i, I agree i would like i would like taylor eighth right there i would too and i want taylor facing righties more than lefties too that's that's another problem the dodgers have a lot of our right-handed hitters are better against right-handed pitchers so we that's why this Teoscar Hernandez signing is so big. We finally get somebody who can hit lefties for good. Like we know they can. Cause even when we signed JD Martinez, that that was our expectation. Uh, someone to hit power against lefties. And I think even looking at the numbers, he might have did better against righties this year. Yeah, he did. And it was like he did the opposite of what we signed him for. Still a great signing though. He's still balled out. Yeah. Um here we go. Got some stats right here. So since uh, Teoscar Hernandez career stats versus left-handed pitching. He has a 887 OPS, damn, and a 136 WRC plus versus right-handed pitching. He has a 772 OPS, still good, and a 110 WRC plus. He has 20 plus home runs in five straight full seasons. He crushes left-handed pitching and can hold his own against right-handed pitching. Sounds like he's exactly what Friedman and the Dodgers were looking for. Yeah, he was. So yeah, I like it, and I've also seen some uh, some clips of him hitting in the playoffs. So I'm ready. <laughs> oh yeah, he's pretty clutch. <laughs> I like the lineup though. I think, like I said, I think we're we should be good. We should be good to go. Opening if opening day was tomorrow, I'd be fine with it. <laughs> yeah.